Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today is Monday, the 15th of June, 2020, and this is the English language summary of the daily press briefing uh, here at the Center for COVID Situation Administration, or CCSA. So first of all, I'd like to start off with uh, the global uh, situation. Uh, the spokesperson uh, mentioned this. I'll just recap it briefly that uh, up until today, um, certain countries are still on the way uh, up in terms of the uh, COVID uh, infections, uh, including countries such as uh, India and Brazil. For countries like the United States, uh, the numbers show that they're a little bit on the way down. For Thailand and Australia, for example, the curve has uh, been flattened for quite some time already. But still, of course, we remain vigilant because of the risk of new clusters as we, as we had uh, reminded uh, the audience for quite some time. New clusters have been uh, springing up in some countries. We don't, uh, I think we don't call it the second wave yet, but uh, there is still that risk in countries such as uh, China. In Beijing, there is a risk of new clusters uh, that has been surfaced uh, in markets and in Japan, in Tokyo, in entertainment areas and districts uh, such as Shinjuku. So, for the case of Thailand, for the past two days, the situation continued to be under control. Um, over the weekend, we did not have an English language summary, but for the numbers over the weekend, there were six new infections. All of them were imported cases from repatriation flights, and the people were directly placed into the state quarantine system. Five of them were repatriated from Saudi Arabia and an another one from the United States of America. Uh, this was over the weekend. For today, it's the first day of the fourth uh, phase of the relaxation measures. As, as you know, it's the 15th of June, the fourth phase now in Thailand. And many establishments and services will be reopened, around 95%. Now, I have a quick uh, reminder, uh, infographic on the relaxation measures as shown on screen, courtesy of the Public uh, Relations Department. You can get details from that uh, Facebook page and website. Also, as uh, you would already know, there was uh, no curfew. The curfew has been canceled uh, since 11 p.m. last night, 2,300 hours last night. And of course, today and in the days ahead, uh, there's no, no curfew anymore. The establishments uh, to be open, you can see the details on screen. And one important piece of information that I'd like to highlight is uh, for the foreign community that apart from the scheme that we have already announced regarding the holders of work permit, uh, they can register and uh, file their documents with the Thai embassies around the world to return. And uh, the return of uh, work permit holders has already begun, as, 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 as you know on a case-by-case -case, uh, consideration basis. But aside from the holders of the work permit, the CCSA, as I've mentioned uh, quite often, has been discussing to allow more foreign citizens to enter Thailand. And just this morning, we just had a meeting to discuss once again uh, the criteria and the details for this scheme in order to, in due course, allow more foreigners to enter Thailand. and this will be the group of foreigners who have permanent residence and those who, have, uh, who are married uh, with a Thai spouse to be able to enter Thailand at the earliest opportunity. So there is progress in this. We are iron ironing out the details. So please stay tuned for more information and more updates on this issue. As mentioned just this morning was yet another meeting on, on this particular uh, agenda. And the various agencies involved are um, coordinating uh, their efforts and putting together the criteria and the process that would make uh, this uh, entry of this uh, group of foreign nationals uh, or the most orderly, uh, uh, in the most orderly uh, way, manner possible. So moving on to the issue of the general situation and the cases in Thailand, as usual, I mentioned earlier about the weekend numbers, but for today, Monday, we have zero, no confirmed cases, making the uh, cumulative number of cases remaining at 3,130.
35, as you can see on screen. Out of this number, 95.2% have recovered or been discharged. That's 2,987. A uh, high number have been discharged and uh, zero fatalities. Very good to hear. Also, some observations. It is now, we are now on the 21st day of having zero domestic uh, infections. So that's quite good news. 20, 21 days without any domestic infection. So 21 days, in the past 21 days, we have had cases, but all of them were from imported uh, cases of those returning from abroad and placed directly into the state quarantine system, but zero domestic uh, infection. So that's very good to hear. And globally, Thailand is now ranked at number 88 globally in terms of number of confirmed cases and infection. Of course, number one would be the highest and we're number 88 uh, globally right now. So that's very good to hear. We hope to keep up the strength, the cooperation, uh, the numbers. Uh, hope that they won't be increasing. Hope that we won't find any new clusters. Hope that we will be able to contain all of the uh, cases that we find or the imported cases that return from, from abroad. Hope that that will continue. And thank you very much for your cooperation. So the spokesperson also mentioned today about the use of Taichana, the Taichana platform. He focused on that, hoping that there will be more use of Taichana. There are actually uh, many, uh, 100,000 perhaps of uh, mobile users in Thailand. We're a very connected uh, country. But out of those uh, owners of mobile phones, we hope that they will be all using Taichana in a more, in a, in a higher degree. Because in terms of check-in of Tai Chi Na, it's, uh, uh, of course, not equal to the number of people using mobile phones yet, of course. But we hope that that will get higher. Because people using mobile phones, of course, they would be entering establishments, going to supermarkets, restaurants. And we hope that that will be a, a norm and a, and a routine for everybody who hold mobile phones in, in Thailand. On the issue of uh, Thai nationals uh, repatriation, we give you an update around once a week on, on this. So we'll have to you on screen uh, the scheduled repatriation flights as well as the uh, projection. Uh, to date, we have uh, repatriated to, uh, over 20,000 Thai nationals by air from 61 countries and territories around the world. Today, tomorrow, as you can see on screen, we also have flights uh, coming in. And in terms of projection, from the 17th to the 22nd of June, we're expecting 23 more flights from various countries around the world. And the assistance to Thai nationals uh, continue. As you can notice, we are doing this in parallel with uh, allowing uh, foreign nationals to enter Thailand in uh, specific groups, starting with work permit holders, and as I mentioned, other groups in due course. So please be patient, please bear with us as we do this uh, in parallel with the Thai nationals repatriation. So on screen, we have, uh, as usual, images uh, of our assistance to Thai nationals. Here with the Royal Thai Embassy in London, the United Kingdom, with Thai volunteer doctors providing one-stop service uh, for Thai nationals uh, that are repatriated. There was a flight uh, the other day uh, from London. These services include health uh, checkup uh, for the certificates, for the certificate of entry, and uh, of course, free of charge, and while providing these services, all uh, officials of the embassy remain in social distancing measures uh, when they meet with uh, persons uh, visiting the embassy. Also, another image that we have is that on the 13th of June, the Royal Thai Embassy in Rabat, uh, Morocco, uh, cooperated with the Thai community there to deliver care packages and medical supplies to 71 Thai nationals in Marrakesh for their daily use. The embassy is also planning to deliver these packages, these care packages to Thai nationals who remain uh, abroad in cities in Morocco, such as Kenitra, Tangier, Tetuan, and Rabat. We also have good news stories every day, uh, this time concerning vaccines. As you may have heard, uh, Chulalongkorn University uh, of Thailand is in the process of researching and developing the COVID-19 vaccine, the Jula Vaccine Research Center, has been researching for the vaccine since February and conducted tests 
on mice, on animals, by the end of March. And in May, the test was conducted on monkeys. And as of now, we have some new progress. Jula Longkorn is preparing to conduct tests on human volunteers in October, which will take approximately 12 months from the test results, for the test results to be ready. And if it meets the expectations, the vaccine should be ready for public dissemination towards the end of 2021. Also in Chulalongkorn University, there is the CU Innovation Hub that started the startup called Baya that will be researching on this issue as well, and more information will be released from the university in due course. So there were some additional points, some Q&A that the spokesperson that was addressed to the spokesperson himself uh, directly. One was that uh, why do, does the uh, pubs and bars remain closed? I think this was received on social uh, media. Of course, as the spokesperson reiterated and mentioned, uh, some business establishments remain to be closed because the social distancing control of these establishments are a little bit more difficult uh, to implement than other business establishments. And therefore, there is a higher risk of infection. We're in the fourth phase now. Of course, the remaining, I would say maybe around 5% of business establishments uh, still remain uh, uh, closed, uh, including pubs, bars, as you know, karaoke bars, uh, soapy massage. Of course, they will be open when the situation uh, improves uh, because these are actually the uh, business establishments with the highest uh, risk, as I mentioned, because social distancing is more difficult to control in these areas. And as mentioned, there are, of course, examples of other countries uh, that have uh, these risks as well, and the new clusters have been found in establishments such as these. So it's a very good lesson to, to learn. That uh, in, is related to the second question that the spokesperson received regarding the spread of uh, COVID in new clusters in other countries, uh, such as in markets in China and in entertainment venues in Japan. So when on social media we were asked about why pubs and bars are closed in Thailand, a case in point, a case in point I'll mention, is in Japan, as mentioned about the new cluster, particularly in, particularly in the entertainment district of Shinjuku. There were, was information that the new cluster of infection was spread from the entertainment venues, the host, what they call the host clubs in Shinjuku in Tokyo. At the same time, in China, the markets, there, it was found that there were COVID infections on the shopping table where raw fish is chopped, is chopped up. Of course, we have to be careful now on eating about raw fish. Uh, cook, cooked, cooked food, of course, is the best. But on the chopping table in the markets in China, that's what was, was where the new clusters were found. So markets and entertainment venues still be are our risks in other countries. In Thailand, that's exactly the reason why the pubs and bars, uh, if you compare it to Japan, it's still, we're still closed on that, just to be in the most 100% more, more uh, precaution, to practice the most precaution uh, possible. And the Department of Health of the Ministry of Public Health uh, invites the general public to inform them of any leading information about the uh, violations of uh, compliance, if there are any bars and pubs that are open or any markets that practice unhygienic uh, practices on, like, um, on the, the chopping table, on the various stalls and uh, the kind of uh, food or products that they sell in the markets. If it is unhygienic, you can report that to the officials at the Ministry of Public Health. So just in terms of conclusion for today, of course, it's the first day of the curfew uh, lifting that we have, actually since last night. But since right now, we're going through the fourth phase of relaxation. Of course, there needs to be the serious uh, adjustment of our daily lives uh, to continue with the routine for the new normal um, environment. 
the guard remains high even though we are uh, traveling. Uh, some people have traveled uh, to nearby provinces, to beaches, and enjoyed uh, restaurants and shopping malls. Uh, that, that, that's fine, of course. That's, that, that's, uh, that's very good. We have to relax, of course, after uh, the past months have kept us home. But of course, when you go out, uh, please continue to keep your guard up and remember to practice the new uh, normal lifestyle, as you see on screen. And the spokesperson mentioned uh, quite often six measures to prevent COVID. Before it was five, now it's six because the six is using the Taishana platform. And we are congratulated on the good news about uh, today's zero infections but, and the, of course, progress of the vaccine, but not to forget that everything would take time until the vaccine is ready. So in the meanwhile, we practice the measures that we have announced. That's the best thing that we can do right now. So the last uh, slide that I have on screen, uh, not including the caricature that you see on screen right now, um, is the five measures. So what is wrong with this caricature, uh, with this uh, slide? It's only five, right? So actually, it has to be six now. Uh, so five plus one measure, so the one last measure, these five, washing hands and the rest you see on screen, plus one measure, that is using the Taishana platform. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, for the English language summary. I'll see you again on Wednesday. Uh, please stay safe and take care of each other. Have a pleasant afternoon and have a good, uh, pleasant and happy Monday as well. Thank you very much. สวัสดีครับ